Hello and welcome back to another Matted Young Vator video. Today we'll be flying the Reiner 737 from Malta to Perugia. Now I will give you some brief history about the Boeing 737. The Boeing 737 is a rival to the A320 family. It comes in around four different variants. The 600 variant, the 700 variant, the 800 variant, and the 900 variant. The only difference between these is their size. The 600 is the smallest, and the 900 is the largest. These are all part of the NG family, the new generation, with improved avionics, etc. The 737-800s can carry a maximum of 189 passengers in a one class configuration so if it carries only economy class it can carry a maximum of 189 passengers and it has two cfm 56 engines like this so with that said let's head on to the briefing okay so here we have our dispatch so here in real life this would be given to you by your airline but uh, we have one i have already generated one made one so here we have some very important things such as the cost index we'll be using, the top of climb wind, the average wind. Top of, uh, Reiner uses top of climb wind for FMC. Then you have your max, uh, your maximum takeoff weight for the aircraft landing weight zero fuel weight, and the estimated takeoff weight, landing weight, and zero fuel weight. We have a cruising altitude, which will be flight level three hundred. And then we have important things such as fuel and how much reserves we will have for the flight. If we scroll down a bit, here we have our route. Here we'll enter it into the FMC with all the airways. Air, yeah, airways. So, with that said, let's go on to the charts. Okay, so here we have the charts. So, we will start at stand 4 for today. After starting up, we will turn around onto Victor uniform onto uniform and onto charlie after going to charlie we will backtrack from a 3 1 we will backtrack from a 3 1 like so 3 1 1 3 and then we will taxi all the way back to alpha 1 over here at alpha 1 we'll turn on to alpha and then we'll line up and take off from a 3 1 remember the heading it's 3 1 2 degrees after taking off, we will intercept the 305 radio onto the Gozo VOR and we will pass Gozo VOR. We will then continue with our route. The uh, frequency for Gozo VOR is 115.170. And now we have to remember a couple things. The transition altitude is pretty much the altitude where we transition from the local pressure, from the local air pressure, to the standard air pressure of 1013 hectopascals. We will then climb to 5,000 feet, that is the initial climb clearance, where we will climb to 5,000 feet by Godo, and we will maintain 5,000 feet. Because we have no uh, ATC for today's flight, we will uh, follow the charts and we will maintain 5,000 feet until the Godo VOR. After Godo VOR, we will continue with the rest of our route as planned. Here we have the Gitod 1 trolley arrival, that's going to be our arrival. At Gitod we may not surpass 250 knots. At uh, Romy Zulu 403 we may not surpass 210 knots. And at Derox we may not surpass 185 knots. All the way through this uh, arri arrival, we will maintain 5,500 feet. But after consulting a real pilot who has flown this route many times in their life before, we will maintain 10,000 feet to stay within radar visibility of the ATC because ATC may not have radar visibility and may not know where we are so they will keep uh, the sky safe but if you're going to simulate a flight by yourself follow the charts and if you have ATC always follow ATC instructions ATC instructions always 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 override any charts chart instructions so, after we enter the hold, as this is where we're going to lose the majority of our altitude, we a 3.4 knot mile hold, we may not surpass 185 knots, minimum holding altitude is 5,000 feet. Over here, we will hold at 5,000 feet at Derrick's. So, we will turn the inbound leg is heading 11 and the outbound leg is heading 191. Here we have our altitude plan. So, at Derrick's, we will then turn on 
around until we reach DME 14, where we will then descend to 4,000 feet, and D at DME 12, 3,400 feet. Then, after Derex, we will descend to 2,800 feet by DME 8, because the 77 cannot, uh, the output cannot maintain altitude in, in increments of 20 feet. And then, at uh, we may take 2,800 feet until we intercept the glide slope at the ME6 over here. And here we have our minimums. For today's flight, we'll be using minimums of 1, 2, 2, 4. So now we have to remember that the the uh, radar frequency, that the frequency for the uh, glide slope for the ILS over here is 110.95 and for Perugia it's going to be 109.4 so after landing we will then taxi in likely via Charlie over here we'll taxi in to the apron where we'll then park at the apron so with that said let's hop into the cockpit okay so here we are in the cold and dark cockpit of the Boeing 737 so now a quick side note, the MCP might look a bit different for some folks because sometimes it's going to be the Honeywell, sometimes it's going to be the Collins. Here we have the Collins MCP, but they work in very similar ways. And these star switches might more, more, be more like handles rather than these switches. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's start. So first what we need to do is supply the aircraft with some power. Let's start the battery to supply it with some DC power. So you can hear everything starts coming to life. We have to first arm the emergency exit light. So if there is any emergency, the emergency exit lights will turn on. So you d we do not. Uh, so we don't turn it on later. It's very important to turn it on. One of the first things. And now we supply the aircraft with some power so it doesn't drain its battery by turning on the ground power. You can hear everything start to turn on like this. Now let's do a little bit of a check, let's check some things. The landing gear lever, make sure that it is down and all the lights are green. So nose gear is green, left gear is green, right gear is green. When it is green, it means that you, you can put pressure on them, you can land on them, you can take off on them, etc. If they are red, it means that uh, they are still extending or they have a fault and they are not uh, extended and you can't put pressure on them. We can also check that they're green up here. These are all green over here. Left gear, right gear, nose gear, like that. Now we check the flaps are in the zero position. You can see the small cylinder here is in the zero position. And we can check through this, through the uh, over here via because they are in the up position so now we have to do the fire test here we have the fire test so first let's go let's test the fire system put it on fault here these two lights should light up if we put it to overheat if there is a fire it will give us this alarm and everything should start to light up. So these two, so these, so the uh, engine one, the APU, and the engine two should should become more light, bright red, and the wheel well should uh, the wheel well alarm should go red, and the engine overheat lights should turn on. Something else, if we do it again, over here, this fire warning bell cut out button should light up red after that we'll test the squibs so number one all these three buttons light up number two all these three lights light up not buttons and now we test the uh, cargo hold so these two should light up and discharge should show discharge and then there you'll hear the alarm here you have the forward and aft uh, fire switches. Now we have to check something else. Here we have the manual gear extension. So if there is any loss of hydraulic power and the gears cannot be extended, you're not going to land on your belly. No, the plane will just uh, extend them using gravity. 
so here you can extend them manually here if you flip the switches but we do not want to do that because because it, it will force the ground crew to have to repair the aircraft so make sure that the flap over here is closed now here we can check that all of the circuit breakers are in that there is no white line around them like so like so and there is nothing everything is in now that we are here we will test the flight recorders so we have the flight recorders over here we'll put on to test make sure the off light turns off and then we can put it back to normal close the guard like this we will test the mac airspeed warning test it will test the overspeed system if you if uh, your aircraft starts to overspeed you should do like sort of clinking sound like that press number test number one and test number two make sure they both make the clinking sound and now we have to test the stall warning so if you turn it so if you press it it will test the stick shakers the uh, stick will start to shake as shown the number one stick shaker is for the left left stick number two is for the right stick so pretty much make sure that the, they uh, start to work and they make a small noise Pr so uh, if you ever go into a stall you will know the pilots will know if it, that and you will get into control of the aircraft so if you ever get into a stall you will know it uh, uh, so you will know <coughs> Now, while we are up here, we will turn on the IRS to nav. The IRS is pretty much the aircraft's GPS, and it will should show the align, so showing that the alignment process has started. Over here, we have our light test. We will test all the lights in the aircraft. Make sure all of them light up. Oh, make sure all the lights light up. The uh, engine fire lights won't light up, and uh, neither will the fire warning. That will not light up either. Make sure all the lights all light up. So we'll put it back to bright. You'd put it on dim in case you want, in case of night operations. Pretty much bright is for the lights to be bright, and dim is for the lights to be more dim in case for night operations. And now the final thing we have to test before we go into the FMC is the oxygen. So press this small tab over here and you should hear the sort of uh, oxygen going through as so. And this little circle should, uh, should show the yellowish background behind it like so so with the, with all that done get your dispatch ready so because we're going to go on to the fmc okay so here we are on to the fmc so a quick side note here we have pmdg setup and fs actions those are unrealistic but they are required for the operation of the uh, simulation pretty much we're going to go into fs actions so we can input our fuel and payload amounts so enter the fuel, we are going to have 7,000 pounds of fuel, 7,000, so 7,000.66, 7,066, 7,066 kilograms, and our zero fuel weight, if we go to payload, we can enter the zero fuel weight, which for today's flight will be 60.3 metric tons. So that's enough with the FS actions, we will now go into the FMC. So from here we have to enter, initialize the IRS so it will know where our airplane is. Now we can either put in the last position or we can go to the next page and rely on the GPS left. That's what we will do. So simply click on the push button next to it, go to the previous page and set the IRS position to that. After that we can go to the root page. Now here we'll enter in our route. So we'll take off from Lima Mike Mike Lima, Multinational Airport, to Lima, India, Romeo Zulu, our Perugia. So our flight is going to be seven flight number is going to be seven one one two, Ryanair seven one one two. 
Center Reiner. 7-1-1-2. And now we will start entering in our route. Let's start by entering the departure for Lima Mike Mike Lima. Row 3 1, go to 3, Delta departure, activate that. We'll go to the route, next page, and here we'll enter in our route. Now I have the route on the second screen. So we have Lima Mike Mike Lima, row 3 1, go to 3, Delta, go to. Now I will enter in the airway. Papa, 1 2 6, into. Papa November Zulu. Then direct to Pamar. Then Mike seven two six to Gitot. And then for the arrival, we will use the ILS Z for runway three one from a zero one correction. The Derrick's transition and the Gihot 1 Charlie arrival. So, after that, we can go to our route, execute our route. So, that is our entire route done. If you want, you can uh, check it out later via the legs page, and we can go to plan mode. We'll do it later. So, now we'll go to our performance and we'll start entering some things. So, our cost index is going to be 6 for today's flight, our reserves. For today's flight are 2,000 2.3 tons 2,293 zero fuel weight is 60.3 and now this plant fuel it would uh, usually be done if you are still loading up fuel but since we are not loading up fuel we leave it empty because it's already full cruising off to is going to be flight level 300 and cruising wind, for Ryanair at least, you enter in your top of climb wind. So top of climb wind is 288 decimal, t t correction, for 35 knots. Do not worry, we'll do it later. So transition altitude is going to be 5000 feet for Malta. And now we'll go to, and now we can execute it. We'll go to earn one limit. Here you, you usually enter a temperature for that your airline would give you, but uh, it's not our fuel we're burning, so we're not going to enter it. And it would limit the performance of your aircraft, so it does not burn as much fuel. But since it's not our fuel we're burning, we'll leave it out. And now we go to our takeoff. So we'll be using flaps 5 for today's takeoff. And now something small over here. The center of gravity in our flight, we do not have it. It is uh, impossible for us to calculate it. So we will, the, the game will extract it from the game for the center of gravity. 19.7 and we will put it in. So here we have our trim which will set. In real life you would have it given to you by the uh, ground crew. which you would enter it in but uh, in today's flight we cannot do that. And then we will enter in our V speed. So here it is calculated automatically by the aircraft. Again, usually you would have it given to you by the airline, or you have a performance calculator, which calculates it itself. 141 and 149. Now, quickly, we will enter in the trim. So, our trim is 5.56. 5, 5 so, let's enter in our takeoff trim. Okay, make sure it is around 5.56. That is around 5.56. And that is our takeoff trim entered. So, that is our takeoff refer takeoff uh, reference done. So, now we will go on to our final flow to make sure everything is going well. Okay, so here we are on the overhead panel. So, let's start our final flow. So, first of all, we'll turn the yaw damper on. What it does pretty much it dampens the yaw to prevent any pilot induced oscillation, which could uh, put the plane into a death spiral. After that, we'll come down to the fuel panel and turn on all of the fuel pumps. Make sure that the lower pressure warning turns off and 
if required if the center fuel tank has fuel which here doesn't have 0 0.00 you turn it on but since today we have no fuel we can turn it off keep it off we will turn on the cross feed make sure test to test it first it should light up bright blue like this and then it should turn into a dim blue turn it off light blue dim blue and nothing turns off once you turn it off now we'll come on to the second row here they are AC and DC uh, yeah, monitors here we do not need them for today's flight but if you want to monitor any power you can turn them to your liking we will then come on down and we will check everything our generators are off for now because we do not have any power to supply see if you turn it on it won't turn off so you just have no power to supply make sure the left and right parkers are in park wipers are in park correction the circuit breaker lights and the panel lights if you wish to turn them on bright you can it will uh, light up the circuit breakers behind you it should light up the circuit breakers and the panel lights panel brightness if you if you you'd use these only for nighttime operations as well but if you wish to turn them on, turn them on. Equipment cooling, leave them on normal for now. It will cool the equipment that you have on your aircraft. Emergency exit lights, currently will keep them on. But if you, and here, correction, we'll leave them on armed. If you close the guard, they will be on armed. And if you wish to turn them on, they will turn on. But uh, it's best to leave them on armed. So if you use close the cover, it will put them automatically to armed. Fasten seatbelt lights, turn them on. Make sure your passengers have fastened their seatbelts because we're still going to start up. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we will turn on our window heat, all of them, except for the middle one that is not a window heat, so you just turn them on. So left side, left forward, right forward, right side. And then we have our probe heat. The probe heat we will leave it on auto for now, but uh, if you are in icing conditions, you turn them on. Since we are not in icing conditions, actually quite the opposite, we are in in uh, very hot, hot conditions, we will leave them on auto. We will turn on our hydraulic pumps, lock 1 and lock 2, engine 2 and engine 1 are already on. And now we will come to our final row, which is mainly air conditioning and pressurization. Make sure trim air is on and make sure recirculation fans are on auto. They recirculate air around the aircraft as required. We have the left and right packs, pretty much they provide the aircraft with some more with some air conditioning, the packs, and the isolation valve will leave it on auto or open for now. I'll leave it on open to make sure it's always open. The APU bleed will leave it off. Or now and the engine bleeds leave them on we'll set our flight altitude to our cruising altitude which is 30,000 feet and their land altitude to 7,700 feet because that's the land altitude at Perugia or about it and our pressurization mode should be on auto after this we'll turn on the APU which is the auxiliary auxiliary power unit which provides the aircraft with some air and with some air and with some power now usually it will show low oil pressure it, it could start out at zero today it started out a bit like this it was already a bit warmed up and then it will start climbing up to 8 EGT and then it will come back down to, to stabilize it around 4 EGT so first it should start out around 0 EGT then climb to 8 EGT that's where the low oil pressure light will turn off and still blast at around 4 EGT. So it is coming down and once the sail blast is around 4 EGT the generator should turn on. But we will not turn them on yet, we still prefer to rely on ground power. And we can turn on the APU bleed, which will provide the aircraft with some much needed air conditioning. You can hear all the fans turning on right now. 
Now we will prepare the MCP for departure. So here we are at the MCP. So we already have our flight directors on. Usually they would be off. So we'll turn flight directors on. Set the runway heading to the heading knob, which is 312. The course selectors. <coughs> excuse me. Set the course selectors to the radio, which we'll use to go to the Gozo VOR. We have our cleared altitude, our initial cleared altitude, which is 5,000 feet. We have our QNH 1011 for today's flight. You would enter it in here. It could be on inches, but it is on hectopascals. So 1011 for today's flight. You'd uh, simply enter in everything by just turning the knobs. Then you have the auto brake on RTO, so it would normally be off, off, but then you turn it to RTO, so then you turn it to RTO as such. So if you ever have a takeoff and, you, and uh, you're having issues, you want to stop the takeoff, there's something in the way, it, uh, <coughs> the brakes would kick in and it would do it for rejected takeoff. Now we can set the MFD to systems, make sure the hydraulic pressures look good. So 3000 to 2980, that is good. The quantity is very good. Okay, turn the MFD back to the engine page, like so. And now we have, can do the configuration check. So let's raise the throttles. It should play that horn. At around 50% it should play the horn, and uh, that is played the horn, we can uh, reduce them back to zero. Start levers, make sure these start levers are still on cutoff, and don't want to turn them on yet. And the radios, we will set them. So, the radio for the Gods of VOR is 115.7, put it to the active VOR. Same for the other one, 115.7, put it to the active on number one and number two here we have our transponder put it to 2000 the, for the score code for now because we do not have a ATC and put it to altitude off so it will transmit our position but just not the altitude because we're still on the ground and now we can do the safety inspection checklist so surfaces and shocks are checked the maintenance sets is checked, battery, air hydraulic pumps, landing lever, down, sh everything is good. Now we can move on to the before start checklist. Okay, so here we are going to start the before start checklist. So first, let's turn on the APU generators, both of them. Turn off the ground power. And now we can go into the FS actions page to remove the ground services and ground power. Increase the ground power and we can increase the stairs on our side over here. So, now after this, after they are removed, we can remove the chalks. The APU bleed is to make sure it is on, which it is. So, let's remove the chalks. Return back to where we were on the takeoff page here. Now, let's do the before start checklist. So, make sure the IRS is on. The gear pins are removed. That's something that is in in real life, not on the simulator. The lights, so we can test the lights. Everything is good. We have already tested them. And the oxygen has been tested 100%. As yes. So, the oil damper is on. The fuel is as required. Is, is on board and the pumps are all on. The emergency exit lights are armed. The fasten seatbelt sights are, are on. The window heat is on up here. The air conditioning is on. The packs are set and the bleeds are on and set. At this point we will turn off the packs because we will need the air for the engines to start up. The pressure the pressurization mode selector on is on auto over here. The hydraulics are normal. The outer brake is rejected takeoff. The speed brake is down. 
Park Break is set. The, f the warnings have been checked, such as the uh, wheel well over here, like this. The uh, take of breaking. The take of briefing we have discussed before. We have uh, in real life we'll do a passenger announcement at this point. The FMC, <coughs> excuse me, and CDU is set over here. The trim is set. The performance you would send it in real life, and you just make sure phones are off, any tablets are off, uh, or, or airplane mode. Doors are locked. Passenger seated. Doors closed. Cap cockpit door is locked etc we've turned off the air conditioning packs now we can turn on the anti-collision light because we're going to start up the engines at this point the parking brake is set and the east transponder is on altitude off so now we're going to start up the engines i'll see you then okay so now we're going to start up the engines so at this point you would request pushback clearance or just push back if you're flying offline and you would request start clearance but since we do TVT, we don't need to do that. We're going to start up the right engine by putting the engine start. To make sure the engine start is on both. And we will go onto the right starter onto ground. That will start starting up the engine to spool up. And once N2 down here reaches 25, you can hear it starting up. We will turn on the start lever. Start lever over here. Twenty five start lever on then you simply wait until N one stabilizes at around twenty and until the low pressure low oil pressure warning over here turns off and the start valve open turns off. That's when you start the engine. The start valve over here should turn off to off to automatically. Here it is stabilizing. The start valve has turned off. It has turned on. The engine has turned on. And now it's quite simple. Just repeat the same process for engine one. So, after you do that, I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are after starting up both engines, both the left and right engine. After that, we are going to turn on both generators up here. So, we'll turn on generator for engine 2 and generator for engine 1. At this point, you can turn the APU correct off, not uh, on the start. And we can turn off APU bleed. Make sure at this point, if you're doing a pushback, make sure all equipment is clear of the aircraft. So, we can taxi well. So, now, after starting up, we need to put both of our engine starters to continuous. And now is where we turn on our probe heat. So probe heat on for both of them. Engine anti-ice. If you are in icing conditions, you turn it on, but you don't need to today. We have already turned the APC bleed off, and at this point, you turn the isolation valve to auto. You would then turn the packs onto auto. So we have started. So the aircraft will have air conditioning. Here. We will set the flaps for takeoff, so flaps 1, flaps 2, flaps 5. That's our, going to be our takeoff flaps. Our trim has already been set. And our start levels is, are on the idle detent over here. Here we, we can check the flight controls. So, left aileron, right aileron. Pull up, push down. Now it has the rudder. There we go. Flight controls have been checked. Everything seems to be in good working order. Here at this point we would we would turn the lower page off. So if there's any warning about the engines, it would automatically turn on. So uh, if you you would know that there's an issue with the engines. And now we can do the perform taxi checklist. So generators are already on. Pro pieces on. Engine anti ice. We don't need it. Start switches are continuous. 
air conditioning is uh, packs auto, bleeds on, isolation valve is auto, flaps are as required, and over here we have the green light for the leaf flaps extended. That means that the flaps are extended. If they, there is the orange light for leaf, for the flaps are in transit, as su such, leaf flaps transit, it means that the flaps aren't extended yet. They're still extend extending. <coughs> And now we have already checked our flight controls. Now we can do the before taxi checklist. We can just turn on our taxi lights, and we can we can now taxi. So turn off your parking brake by uh, simply uh, pushing full brakes, and we can start turning. So advance the horn to make sure there is no horn. Advance the throttle to make sure there is no horn. Correction, not to advance the horn. Hmm. And now just start turning. Advance the engines a bit so we can turn. And now I, I am going to use differential brakes to make a very tight turn. So I'm going to put down left brake, left brake to uh, not turn on, on the left side and to turn more on the right side so we will turn quicker with a tighter radius. Okay, so maintain maintain a low speed while taxiing. There is no need to maintain a very high speed while taxiing. So around, t so on the apron, maintain around 15 knots. On the taxiway, maintain a maximum of 30 knots for straightaways, and reduce for turns. And for backtracking the runway, you can go as far as f fast as 50 knots. So, I'm going to taxi to. The, so I'm going to taxi to the uh, holding point, as said on the charts, as we did before. And now, and now I I will see you once we reach the the holding point, Charlie. I'll see you then. Okay, so here are the holding point now. You would request uh, permission for ATC to uh, enter the runway, but uh, since we have no ATC, we will simply enter the runway and backtrack to Alpha. At this point, to make sure traffic doesn't hit you, you would uh, put on your strobe light. So position strobe and st strobe and steady lights to make sure no traffic hits you as you're entering the runway. And now we will taxi to the end of the runway so after we I will see you after we taxi onto Alpha 1 and onto Alpha as we're holding short of the runway I'll see you then because here we are holding short of runway 3 1 now we can line up onto the runway if ATC gives permission because we're going to set some things before takeoff let's set them up now landing lights on runway turn off lights on the arm, the outer throttle arm, the lateral navigation. So, after takeoff, we will, the aircraft will um, start moving well after takeoff, laterally. Initial climb is five thousand feet, and now we, now we can take off. We will turn on our transponder, transponder to transmit and receive warnings. Now, stop on the runway, advance our throttles, take, take off go around, turn on the clock so we can start moving. Okay, now we are moving. We have some call outs via the PMG, 80 knots, passing 100 knots. V1, rotate, V2, okay, now, pitch up to around 10 degrees, put the radio climb, gear up, and now, we can start everything, so, now we can go to level change altitude, and we can turn on the autopilot via command A, level change for altitude, and raise our Raise our speed to around 240. 
We can start tracing our flaps to not overspeed the aircraft. Flaps, flaps up fully because we are already quite fast. And now we are good. So now that we are airborne, now we can simply climb up to 5,000 feet and after that we will climb up to our cruising altitude. So I will meet you after passing Godot VOR. Okay, so here we are about to pass Godot VOR. We are in altitude hold and as we start to turn we will pass it soon. Godot is below us and the passengers right now will have a wonderful view. Here we will climb, after passing Godzo, we will climb up to altitude, we will engage VNAV, so the aircraft will calculate all speed restrictions, etc. And set our altitude to 300,000, 30,000 feet, correction, 30,000 feet. After takeoff, we can turn off our, our outer brake, and you can go to standard Q&H as we just passed it. Okay, now you can just uh, ch we're gonna now we are now going to climb to thirty thousand feet. So first, let's have a few checks after takeoff. Make sure fuel is balanced. Now fuel is a bit imbalanced, but it's not too much, so that there is no need to worry. Lights. We can now turn our landing lights and runway turn off lights off. We can also turn our taxi light off. Our APU, make sure that is off. Pressurization is good. And our seatbelt signs, we can now put them to auto. Now I will meet you once we pass, once we are at cruising altitude. I'll see you then. Okay, so here we are at cruising altitude. Now at cruising altitude, you would go here and limit your bank angle limiter to 10 degrees. So your plane won't bank very a lot if you get into a turn. So, because you don't want your passengers to be knocked over if they go into the bathroom at cruising altitude. Now would be also a very good time to start programming the charts. You should start programming the arrival. You could either have done it on the ground, but we're going to do it here. So, I have my arrival chart on my second screen and then we'll start programming it. So, GITOD is 250 knots or below. And maintain 5,500 feet. Then, Rome is 403, 210 knots or below. 5,500 feet. And Derek's 185 knots or below. 5,500 feet as well. Then, at that point, we're going to hold. Now, we already have a hold after if you have a missed approach but we're going to next hold and we're going to hold at Derek's so Derek's copy it like this let's start programming the hold the inbound leg is going to be 1-1 one, one on a right right turn and the leg distance is 3.4 nautical miles we're done programming the hold because we would have speed and target altitude right there so that should be our arrival our star already sorted out and then you can start uh, entering in our approach reference we can do that as well so first we need to see how much we're going to weigh once we're coming for a landing so we can go to the progress page at uh, at the airport we're going to have 3.4 tons of fuel on the aircraft and we need to see how much we're going to burn until we get there. So 3.4 minus 5.1 minus 3.4. That would equal 5, 5.0 minus 3.3, .3, which equals 1.7. So you can come here, gross weight minus 1.7. It's 60, 63.7, if I am not mistaken. And now we have our new speeds. So we're going to be using flaps 40 for the arrival. 
and now we can set in our our ILS frequencies so 110.19 or 5 set that to our active actually no let's keep it inactive 110.19 or 5 as such and we can set our course for the runway which is 11 degrees now we're doing this uh, a bit early so we don't have to worry about it as we're coming close to our arrival there we go now we can just relax and enjoy our flight I'll see you at, at around when we're approaching our top of descent you can see your top of descent where your top of descent is by uh, uh, putting your map out and there is T slash D that's the top of the scent so I'll see you at around where we're going to be doing our top of the scent see you then okay so here we are approaching P P Papa November Zulu uh, we're going to descend the Papa November Zulu to 10,000 feet so we'll enter that in to the MCP 10,000 feet as such so when we want to compress this button over here to start the descent early, manually. <coughs> so, let's set the outer brake. We'll be using outer brake 3 for today's landing. And now we can perform the descent checklist. So, uh, our pressurization, the landing altitude is set. Anti ice, we do not need for today's flight. We have uh, discussed the approach briefing earlier in the video. Fuel seems to be quite good, it seems to be quite balanced. And everything seems to be good. So, we are going to start this descent early. Yes, we are 20 nautical miles away from top of the descent, but we're going to start it early. So we, so, we do not have to descend very quickly. Because the uh, top of the descent, the FMC, the plane, uh, likes to calculate the top of the descent as late as possible. So it... Uh, can save more fuel, but uh, usually it's a very harsh and steep top of descent. Descent. So, now as we start descending, we can increase our bank angle limiter to 25 degrees. Now we can make sure that our seatbelt signs, we can turn it on. So, since we are starting to descend, we can turn our seatbelt signs on. So, I am going to continue the descent. Uh, I will meet you later on after at around Gitod or after we reach 10,000 feet. So, I'll see you then. Okay, so as we continue descending, we can set up some more things. So, first to set up the transition levels because here there is standard here in H in yellow, surrounded by a yellow box, which pretty much says it's uh, it uh, the aircraft thinks you should have set to normally set it to the local q &H. anyway so let's go to the descent page and forecast we need to set the transition level now in Perugia it's set by ATC so we'll use the transition altitude which is flat level 60 6000 feet after that you can set the minimums which is on the charts to 1224 which is our our minimums 1224 over here and then after that, here we are nearing 10,000 feet. So we can do. So we can check that the fuel is balanced. We can check that the lights are still off. APU. So yeah, we can check the lights are good, still off. Yeah. Angle of bank, not APU. Correction. Angle of bank is 25 degrees. Pressurization is good and seat belts now are on. We turned that one a while ago. So we can also prepare the uh, e Q and H for the standard pressure in Perugia, which for r right now, right now it is one zero one one. So once we press the standard button, it will come down. Now at this point we will uh, not go with the VNF, so we can go with uh, level change, so we can start lowering our speed. So we can now set everything manually, and we'll fly it manually. So, now all we have to do is wait until we pass Gitot to continue the approach. So, I'll see you then.
Okay, so now we're approaching Giza. We might want to start slowing down to around 185 knots. Because right after Gitot, we will continue descending to 5,500 feet. You can set the altitude before that. It will go to altitude hold. And now that we have passed Gitod, we can start descending. We can start uh, lowering our flaps. Flaps 1, passing flaps 1, so we can go to flaps 2 and flaps 5. And now it's continued descending. But into level change, so the plane will descend. There we go. Now we are on a descent into derricks to 5,500 feet. So I will continue losing altitude and I will continue lowering my speed. So I will extend my flaps more while I am in the hold. So I will go into the hold once, twice or like three times. So then I, until I've lost enough speed and altitude, so we can do the approach. The airport is over there, as you can see, it's right there. So, I'm going to enter the hold, I'm going to lose some altitude, and I'm going to get prepared for the everything. So, I'll see you once we've lost some altitude, we've entered the hold, and we have lost some speed. So, I'll see you then. Okay, so here we are in the hold. You can now transition to local pressure. And now we can start lowering our speed some more. If we want to, we can actually start descending immediately from here. So, let's actually do that. So I sent to 4,000 feet. We can now activate to move to the ILS frequency. And here we are at around DME 14. We can turn on our approach mode. So approach mode. So we'll intercept the localizer. And you can go to our hold and exit the hold. You can execute that. Okay, so we have an uh, exit armed, and now we will descend, continue descending, so flaps down, and now we're going to intercept the localizer glide slope, so let's remember the charts, what the chart said, so at DME 12 we will descend to 3400, and then 2800, and we will just continue from there. DME 10, we can try to extend our landing gear. Let's continue bringing down our flaps. It will play this because usually at uh, f flaps 15, it will tell us to lower your gear. So we can actually do it right now. Let's lower our landing gear right now. We could do it a bit later, but let's do it right now. It will increase a bit of drag, but that is not an issue. Okay, so the aircraft is established on the localizer with the gears down. And now, if you want to, if you want to engage the Autoland system, you can engage Autopilot Command B for the Autoland system. So, pretty much, Command A is uh, the. Uh, there, these are the two separate. Uh, autopilot systems. So, there's Command A and Command B. If to do an Autoland you need to do engage both but just for normal flying such as uh, cruising you only need command a or a command b usually both pilots use is command a now i will continue bringing lowering the flaps and slowing down and now after passing dme 12 we can descend to 3400 feet level change Here we are, here we are on the glide slope very close.
and now we simply descend the aircraft. The runway is right in front of us, and we follow the descent. Now, you, now what you do is you simply land it manually. So we can do some extra things. Some last things we have to make sure the we monitor the terrain, make sure we don't hit anything. We are intercepting the local. We have intercepted localizer, three thousand four hundred feet. Here is our radar altimeter. Our gear is down, our flaps are down, we are uh, lowering our flaps so we can continue lowering our speed. And now we have intercepted the glide slope. Now if you want to, you can le leave the plane to do its thing and it will land the plane for you. But uh, I, but usually I'll do it twice, usually do it will continue flying the plane, uh, plane at around DME3 or DME4. Landing gear is down with three greens. Make sure the start switches are continuous over there. Out of break, we have set it already. And now here's where we turn on our landing lights and robot turn off lights. Not the tax lights, tax lights are on the ground. So, now. Now you can see that command is uh, lit up in green. That means that the plane is going to outland itself, and you can see that the flare is uh, already uh, armed. So from this position, then I can land the plane manually, which is what I will do. So now you can co you can uh, continue lowering the speed as you continue extending the flaps, flaps sturdy. And then continue lowering the speed for DME flaps 40. There we go. And now you can land the plane. Now, from this position, I will disable the auto throttle and I will disable the autopilot. Be ready to take control. All the plane will usually d d bank a bit off course and now you simply just follow the flight directors if you want to and now you just land the plane keep keep your speed uh, within the w within the uh, reference speed which you set in the approach we're approaching our minimums Make sure you don't stall the aircraft, that is uh, very important. You don't want to uh, land, crash the aircraft. Try to stay within the glide slope, okay? Plus 100 with, with minimums. minimums. Minimums, so now we decide that we want to go around the negative, so we are safe to land. We are good to land, a bit high though. You can see on the glide slope. Lower speed a bit. There we go. It's a simple case of landing the aircraft nice and smooth. Eyes on the runway. Now we're going down a bit too quickly. Now very close to the ground. Around 30. Retard the throttles. Idle thrust. So we land. Flare. Beautiful landing. Now use your rudders to maintain around the center line. And you can now extend your speed brakes. And that is, and now that we are safely on the ground, we will exit via Charlie. So that is the full flight. We will uh, still uh, uh, come onto the apron to shut off everything. We can now disarm our s outer brakes, uh, and I will still shut down the aircraft. But that is the end of the flight. So let's taxi in. 43 knots ground speed, taxing on the runway, backtracking. It's uh, around 50 knots, that's good. And now, as we exit the taxiway, exit the runway, we vacate the runway. We inform ATC that we vacated the runway, but since we have no ATC, we don't do that. And we exit the runway. 
There we go. Now we can stop the clock there. If required, take off configuration. There we go. At this point, we, uh, we can start retracting the flaps. There we go. And now we taxi onto the apron. So now we can turn, we can continue, we can turn our lights off except for taxi light, position light, strobe, and steady. Correction, steady, not the uh, strobe and steady, the position light, steady. And then unless it's required, transponder, we can now turn it to altitude or off. Star switches, we can turn them off from here. The MFD here, we can turn it to the engine page here. So down here, we're going to have the engine page again. Flight directors, we can turn them off now. Put back the disengage. MCP altitude, we will return to 10,000 as it was at the beginning of this flight. The indicate their speed 100 knots as it was at the beginning. We can turn the probe heat off now or auto, unless it's required. Now, as we're going to taxi, we're going to turn on the APU, not lose power once we shut off the engines. And now it's uh, you simply taxi into the apron. Just control the plane and taxi in. Now I'm going as we taxi into the apron. I am going to start slowing down. And there we go. As the APU starts to turn on, we can set the generators on. We're going to turn off our tax lights as we pull into the apron or to the stand. We're going to turn on the APU generators. Because we're going to turn off the engines very soon. Here we go. Now slow down. And now we taxi in to our stand over here. Here we are on our stand. We turn on our parking brakes. Make sure our gen AP generators are on and their generator is on. And now we can the f start the fuel cutoff switches down here. These we can turn them off or to cut off. We can now turn off our seatbelt signs. We can and once N two is less than twenty over here, we're going to turn our anti-collision lights off. Okay, so anti-collision lights off. Now we can just do the shutdown and shutdown checklist. So let's start. Fuel pumps off. Electrical systems are on. Passive seatbelt signs off. Window heats off. Probe heats are already off. Anti ice is off. The electric hydraulic pumps off. 
the watch recorder over here is on or automatic it's already on the air conditioning packs to auto they're already auto engine bleed on ap bleed off the exterior lights are off start switches are off already flaps are up and no lights p brakes is down and no detent make sure there are no lights Parking brake is set, touch which is cut off, weather radar, which we is off, which we didn't use for this hint, which we didn't use for today's flight, but it's good. And cockpit door we can unlock. Now we'll just shut it down. IRS mode selectors off. The oil damper turns off automatically, because it has no IRS. Emergency exit lights, we can now turn them off turn them off now if you want you can uh, get some ground power via FS actions ground services put the wheel shocks and request ground power if you want to we're going to do it and the trim and now we can turn off the APU now we're going to connect the ground power but if you want you don't need to so we're going to turn off the APU ground power is available but we don't need it so because we're going to turn off everything and now battery off well the plane is now returned to a cold and dark state okay you have now reached the end of today's video don't forget to like share and subscribe in order to never miss a future upload because more videos are in the works special thanks to captain malcolm for his guide